Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so trading confidence. This is a confidence, not confluence. And I mumbled that a bit, but I said say confidence. Trading confidence. How does confidence fit in to your trading and, and why is it necessary? Because you think, well, do we really need confidence? I've got profitable trades. Does it care if I'm confident about it? Well, yes, it does. And let me give you a reason why, and why you should really try to boost that confidence and work on that confidence. Confidence gives you a couple of things. Confidence gives you ability to pull the trigger without worrying about the outcome of that trade. If you're worried about taking the trade, you're going to second guess yourself. You're going to worry about things. Here's a great example. When you're entering a motorway on a slip road, you know I love analogies, guys, and car ones, plane ones, anything like this. You're entering a motorway on a slip road, right? If you're driving with confidence, you're on the throttle, you're at a reasonable speed, you're probably going more than the motorway speed because it's easier to scrub off 10 mile an hour than it is to put it on. Depends what car you've got, of course, but it generally speaking, if you're talking about all cars, it's easier to scrub off 10 mile an hour than it is to put it on at 70 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, officer. You get the idea. But if you're going there and you're nervous, you're gonna be pootling along at slow speed, looking in the mirror, worrying, putting your head around, you know, think, trying to get moving in, uh, I think there's not much time, and seeing that slip road coming off and getting nervous, and the next thing is you're, you're, you're kind of making a jerky movement. It's just, we don't drive like that because we're confident as drivers because we've been driving for a while. You accelerate down the slip road, you know there's gonna be a gap, you eye up the traffic, you look in your mirror, you spot the gap, you see what the position's like, you see what type of vehicles have got there, do I need to brake? Am I got a row of trucks that I'm, I'm gonna kind of have to deal with? Is there a gap? Can I accelerate in front of this? You just judge it and you're confident that in the small amount of time you've got from getting on the slip road and having the visibility of lane one, that you'll make a judgment that will get you onto the motorway safe. And you know, you will, you know, 999,000, whatever. <laughs> I was gonna say 999 and that changed it to 1,000, that's why it came out of that. The majority of the time, let's say, you get on safely is a story for you many, many, many years ago when I was probably 20, I guess, I was, the, the, there's this girl, she had never been on the motorway, she was too nervous, like, there's nothing to worry about, just don't worry, I'll get on the motor, I'll sit next to you, we'll just work through it together. It's relatively quiet, you know, let's just do this. Get on the slip road and just mash the throttle. She's in like an old, I think it was a Peugeot 106 or some, something like that, pretty underpowered, car, one lead to something like this. I'm like, listen, get on the slip road, just mash the throttle, get yourself up to speed, um, and then just take your time to observe what's going on. And the worst case scenario, very worst case scenario, you can use the hard shoulder, which is in the UK, just an emergency lane, if you like. So very, very worst case. So you're not gonna crash. If there's any problem, you can just drift onto that, fine. And that, not that you want them to do that, but it was like the safety net. But anyway, going down there, just flat out, just gripping this wheel like this, and knuckles and like just easy, relax yourself, relax, she's gripping it. And then she's looking, she's looking, so you've got a gap, she says, yeah. So she starts to steer in, and as she looks, she sees there's a car there. So she overcorrects the other way, when this little 106, like slight, almost not quite sliding, but you know, weight distribution is huge on this, you know, the speed we're going, this little 106, which is not a sports car, and it's veering like this, and she's yanking the wheel like this, and it's back and forward like this, and it's like, whoa, easy, easy, steady. You know, it's, <laughs> eventually she takes control of it and, and manages to get into the motorway. Anyway, that story is really all about confidence, yeah? It's about, she was not confident entering that slip road. She was nervous and she created an issue because she looked and she, whereas most of us would be down there, you'd look, you'd see there's a vehicle there, you'd either back off or you'd push the throttle down and get in front. You'd do one or the other. You wouldn't even think twice about it. You wouldn't start to veer in and then jerk the wheel to the left and flew fly off into the ditch. Same with trading, right? The confidence, is when you're executing and when you're in the trade as well. So you're in the trade, you get confidence with executions. Like, okay, I know that I'm gonna execute this because this is what I do, this is how I operate, this is how I operate my trading business. And then when you're in the trade as well, you're like, hey, I am gonna hold this. I don't know what the outcome's gonna be. Don't forget, confidence is not knowing what's gonna happen. It's like, I don't care what's gonna happen, but I know this is the right thing to do. I know this is the right thing to do. And I think the car analogy is quite good. You know, you're going from A to B, you don't know what's gonna happen along the route, but you know you're gonna do the right thing along that route. You know you're gonna stop in the right places, you're gonna turn at the right place, you're gonna avoid the accidents, you're gonna keep that in your lane, you're not gonna cut anybody up, you're gonna do all this stuff, and you're gonna get there safely. It's the same with trading in a way, you don't know 
what that pathway is going to look like, how that chart is going to look like to get from A to B, but you know you'll manage it well. And if you have to take a stop, you take a stop, you have to come out early, you have to take up earlier. If you get your profit target, you get your profit target. And so your ability to execute becomes a lot more comfortable. You're coming from a kind of comfortable place. You're more relaxed about it. You're not so wound up about things. You're confident that even if this is a loser, it, it, having that security means that you're not bothered by it. Even if you have a couple of losers, yes, you might have a plan in place to step back because you recognize that there's still the chance of you trading emotionally. It doesn't mean you don't trade emotionally, but it doesn't dent your confidence because your confidence has been built from hours and hours and hours and hours of screen time and trades and saying, hey, I know this is the right thing to do. It might not be in this instance, but I know if I take this trade a thousand times, it's gonna come out on top. And so it's worth building your confidence, guys. I could talk about the analogies as well of you know, execute, exiting and trading more size and all this stuff, but the point is it's worth building. It's worth focusing on. It's worth really you know, spending some time each day or each week to, to build it. And you know, this is sometimes where you know, we do things in trading which aren't necessarily for our p and they're for our confidence. You know, to build the confidence, maybe it's okay just to take some singles, spend a week just taking little singles, money, money, just put some money in the bank, money, money, money. Don't look for the runners, don't look for anything crazy, just looking to build that confidence that you can find those good trades and you're not trying to put everything together. So anyway, trading confidence, guys. See you next one. Keep risk managed. Bye-bye.